Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Firebase in your Android Studio project. So for instance I have an Android Studio project. Now what we're going to need to do is go to Chrome or your internet browser and go to firebase.com and create an account and do whatever you need to do. Get to your console.firebase.google.com and here you'll be prompted to create a new project. So you just click that and create a new project. We're going to just do a tutorial project so we'll call it uh, getting started tutorial then you want to click here on add firebase to your Android app and you'll see here it wants a few details it wants your package name and your SHA-1 key that could be SHA-1 I'm not really sure but uh, let's get our package name first so in Android Studio go to your uh, activity any pack any activity will work and at the top you'll see package and then your package name so mine is that obviously I'm just gonna copy and paste that into there so that one's done then we're gonna need our debug signing certificate for our SHA and so what we're gonna do to get that is go back to Android Studio on the side here you should see a thing that says Gradle we're gonna click on that uh, it doesn't really want to show us anything right now of course so we'll just click refresh and there you see it has popped up for us so we'll just expand that real quick pop it open and in our first one getting started with firebase that's the name of the project open it go into task and go into android go to sign in report bam all you gotta do is click it or click enter on it and then it'll do all this for you and so what you want is a SHA-1 key so I just copy and paste that just like so and then go back to your browser and paste that in like that and click add app you'll see it has downloaded a google services.json file we will obviously need that somehow navigate to the folder where it is now located and you're going to want to copy that but i'm hitting control c you can right click and go down to copy then go back to android studio and you'll see here it says android you want to switch it to the project view then open this up and then go down and you'll see just your basic file system so what you want to do here is go to app and then right in here this is what you're going to need so just right click on app and then go down to show and explore or find and finder and we're going to paste into app that json file the google services one then we can x out of that we will not need that anymore and we can switch back to our android view then here we will click continue and you'll see here it wants us to add a few things to our project just so our project knows that we're going to be using a database the first one we're going to need to do is in project build.gradle so just copy all that and then what we're going to do here is back out to the project view one more time so you'll see the build.gradle file right here just click on that and paste it right in here just like that Although you will see we have two build scripts and two dependencies, so what we're going to do is combine them. So we're going to cut the class path into this right here, just like that, and then we can delete all this because we don't need that no more. And click sync now. While that's syncing, we go back here, and we'll get our plugin that we need. Just copy that. Come back here. Go to back to Android and then go to grade, Gradle Scripts and build that Gradle. Then right in here we can go ahead and add our plugin just like that and click sync now. So now that we've done all that we can click finish and we should be done. So let's just open up our thing real quick and go to database. Then we'll see we have our getting started tutorial this is like the root of your database and we will continue to stem on from here and little nested things here it will show you that default security rules require users to be authenticated I'm sure that probably makes no sense if you've never done this before basically let's just click learn more to learn more about it and it'll tell us a little bit more about it so what it's saying here is it's talking about how to access the database as far as who can do it um, currently it's I think it's default right now so 
I'm not quite sure. I think you need authentication, but we don't have any of that set up right now, so we're just going to do public. Keep in mind this is dangerous because anybody who has the link, this um, this right here is the link to your database, can edit it. So, you know, you can do it, just don't keep it like that for a while. So I'm going to switch it to that, and that will allow it so we can edit it from our app with no issue. So let's go back here to data, and so now everything's all finished. We're going to create a new root, and we're going to call it data. So we'll just call the name data and the value data. Click enter. There, now we have a root. Also, you will need to go here to your SDK manager and go to SDK tools. And you'll see here we have Google repository and Google Play services. You will need both of those for this to work properly. So just download that at will. Also, in your build.gradle under your Gradle script, you'll need to add this line. It's compile com.firebase firebase client dash android colon 2.5.2. Basically, it just adds the cloud option in your project settings under file, which you will need to make things a little bit easier. So just to go file, project settings, and then go to cloud, and make sure that's checked. And you'll see this will add dependencies, like the one we just added and permission and it'll modify your manifest which is basically just adding the permission also in your build.gradle file you should probably add the packaging options like these right here right inside android and before default config although it doesn't really matter your order in here as long as it's inside android so in our layout we're going to add a let's say text view now let's do a large text to make it more readable and then we're going to add two buttons, one right there and one right there. Bam. We're going to set the ID of all three objects we have here. So this will be at plus ID slash button donut. Bam. You can click yes to that. We'll do button nougat. I don't know how to spell it, but I think it's something like that, hopefully. And then we'll set the idea of our large text to let's go at plus id slash uh, text view display maybe text like that and then we can name this to donut so there we go we have all our buttons and our text now we're going to need to do some java work so under app, under Java, under your package name, right click, go to new, and create a new Java class, and database, I guess, that's generic enough. And then we're going to make this extend something. It will extend android.app.application. Inside our database, we're going to need to add a little bit something. We're going to do add override. And then public void on create, just like that. And then in here, we're going to do Firebase dot set Android context, and we'll go with this. We'll also need the line super dot on create. Then that'll finish up for us. Now let's head on over to our manifest, which is under manifest and inside application. But before our first activity. We're going to add a part about name. We're going to do dot database for the name. Anyway, let's go back to our main activity right here. The database is the file we created. Main activity is just our regular file. And we're going to define our three pieces right here that we have. So we have our text view, which we call text view display. We have our button donut, and we have our button nougat. So. Uh, above on create and above the at override method right there we're going to do text view oh, I'm sorry not text text view we called it text view display I believe and then we're going to do two buttons one button is and I realize I'm probably misspelling literally everything 
And then we're going to do button new git. It's going to bug me. Everything's misspelled. I'll fix it in GitHub before this video gets uploaded, though. There we go. We have our two that we need right there. We are going to need to add another method besides onCreate. So first we're going to do at override with capital O. And then protected void on start. And bam, like that. And then we'll do super dot on start. And then we can declare all our things. So we'll do text view display dot, or I'm sorry, text view display equals text view. And keep clicking text. Find view by ID r dot ID dot text view display. I must have not completed display, but there we go. Then we'll also do our button donut equals button find view by id r dot id not there we go button donut and then lastly button nougat equals button find view by id r dot id dot button nougat of course, it's not working for me. There we go. Back here in the main activity, we're going to add the line about Firebase. So we'll do Firebase like that, and then Firebase reference. Back here, we're going to go Firebase reference equals new Firebase. And inside our quotation marks, we're going to have the link to our database. So here's our database in Firebase in our console. It's the link right here. All we need is this. So let's just copy that. We'll go back here and we'll paste that in just like that. And ba bam Now we're going to add a value event listener. Basically it'll just listen and check to see if any values have been changed. So it's Firebase reference or whatever you named it. Dot add value event listener. Then new value event listener and bam it makes two methods. One's on data change and one's on cancel. On data change is basically any time the data changes, it'll update our app. And on cancel would be some sort of error that may occur. For some reason, it doesn't end off with a colon or a semicolon, so just add one right there, just like that. In our on data change, we're going to add the line here about string text equals data snapshot dot get value and then we'll give it the type of string dot class and end that off so basically right there we just got what are the text was from our database and then we're going to need to set the text field that we created in our layout to whatever value we received so we're going to do text view display which is referencing this text view right here dot set text and then text and then ba bam so I have adjusted the code a little bit you'll see the link is a little bit longer now let me show you what I did inside our database we see we have the data thing and I also have added type and donut so just click on data and we'll see we have made data actually I'll show you how to make this all right now so I'm just going to X out of this, click delete, bam. So click here and go to and add data. And then just click plus sign here and then add type. Set type for the value to be donut. And then click enter and then bam. So when we go back to Android Studio and click run and run it on our emulator phone, we have this pop up. And you'll see it says donut in the text. So let's go back to our Firebase console. And let's try switching donut to, let's say, jelly. Click enter. And you'll know on our app it has changed to jelly. Very nice. It's working so far. But we're going to add just a little bit more to it. So under here, just like so, we're going to do Firebase. Or I'm sorry, we're not going to do Firebase. We're going to do button donut dot set on click listener new view if 
I can type view.onclick listener. I'm going to do that and bam. Didn't quite work for me. Just like that. There we go. And then we'll do Firebase reference dot set value and then we'll set it to donut. And I still can't spell donut for some reason. There we go. Then we're just going to copy this whole thing right here only to the semicolon and then click paste. There we go. And we're going to change from button donut to button nougat. There we go. And we'll change this line here to new nougat. Still can't spell. And we'll just refresh our app and run it again basically. So now if everything is working correctly, when we click on our buttons, we should be able to change text like we're doing right now to whatever we want. So if we go back here to our console, we'll see the type is donut. That's odd because I thought we set it to jelly. But if we click nougat, it now changes to nougat. If we click donut, it changes to donut. We can also go back here and change it to um, John is the best tutorial maker even though he can't type and then we'll even change it to that uh, I guess our buttons are left because our relative layouts a little too persnickety but we'll just change it real quick to high bam and we can switch it back again so hopefully you guys learned a lot in this video there will be more like this to come explaining as much as I possibly can uh, if you have any questions, don't feel any discouragement to ask. Ask away. Ask to your heart's content. Ask in the comments. Ask on my website. Ask in an email. Whatever you got to do, just keep the questions coming. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.